Scotty Barnes was fantastic in his first playoff experience. It was inconsistent, yes, but that wasn't his fault. Injuries come and injuries go, but when he was able to be on the court, contributing what he could, he was tremendous. And sure, it didn't end in a win, it didn't end in a championship, hell, not even a series win. But I tell you this, he's a young, burgeoning star in the league. He has time, potential, and patience all on his side to see just how he might dominate this context, these playoffs going forward into his career. We're going to break down how his first series went, but before we do that, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm told it helps. Let's start here. It's game one, and Tyrese Maxey has the misfortune of trying to handle Barnes by his lonesome. His inevitable trip to the bucket is met by the potential of a Joel Embiid contest. I say potential because not everyone is built to contest Barnes' overwhelming physicality at the rim. He just wrapped his rookie season, but there's already a long list of guys who have jumped with him and failed. And whether he's all the way at the bucket or hitting the short pop shots and bankers, he's dependable at the rim. These foundational aspects of his game will continue to get more dangerous as his shooting and dribbling develop along with the rest of him. Not to mention his body. He's listed at 6'7". There's rumors and reports that he's already 6'9". Who knows what size he'll be as soon as the start of next season. He's a very curious combination of size plus a million different things. Plus, he actually got the Magic Johnson co-sign, right? From Magic Johnson. Quote, There's definitely a lot of showtime in him. He can do everything on the basketball court, much like myself. He's big, he's strong, he's physical. He can make his teammates better like I was able to do, and he's a matchup nightmare like I was. That matchup nightmare aspect popped up in game five as the Raptors used him as kind of a release valve for their offense. They went to great lengths to try and free up Pascal Siakam, but it was really helpful for the team as a whole that the ball could funnel to Barnes for a post-up and a bucket. In game six, Barnes was subjected to the exact same treatment that a younger Pascal Siakam got in the 2019 championship run. He was guarded by Embiid. Embiid sagged way off. This gives us a really fun snapshot of how Siakam and Barnes were treated as if they had the exact same limitations, but found radically different answers to overcoming them. Siakam danced around Embiid with an unbelievable flash of balance and grace, and Barnes saw the 76ers behemoth and just rammed him under the bucket. As far as getting to the bucket is concerned, these approaches are polar opposite. Scotty, at 20 years old, put the dribble down, put the shoulder down, and moved Embiid off his spot. Just a wonderful punch of touch and physicality that few players ever step into the league with, let alone develop. And Showtime, that penchant for always choosing the right play in transition or the open floor and managing to pair that decision-making with flair. Harden sits too high up on him. He turns it down the court and spots Thad for the weak side lob. Then he gets the outlet from Thad, slaps a sign on his own forehead that says, Tyrese, direct your attention towards Siakam, please. Then deftly lobs a no-look pass to Precious for a dunk. Picture perfect hit aheads to OG in an early seal. In the half court, making the extra pass that the 76ers didn't want to defend. And maybe you won't like this next play in particular, but the man tried to go off glass to himself in the half court. Like he was Tracy McGrady at the All-Star game, only in a playoff game. It was an absolute failure, but this is showtime, baby. The playmaking verb, the willingness to try anything, it extends from trying to bully Embiid and all the way to these types of harebrained schemes on the court. Defensively, he was part and parcel of some of the Raptors' best defensive performances. He found success as James Harden's primary and allowed the Raptors to switch the Harden and Embiid pick and rolls without worrying about a scram switch on the back end. If you watched game six, then you know that the Raptors had to scram switch Gary out of everything. Scotty was long on contests, long in passing lanes, and aggressive and hardworking at the point of attack and on switches. It was imperfect, but it was long, aggressive, tenacious, emblematic of the Raptors as a whole. All this to say Barnes fit into his team's ethos on both ends of the floor, managed to help his teammates, and still found room for his unstoppable curiosity for what he can do on an NBA floor. This year was just a taste, but Barnes is going to be bringing it in the playoffs for years and years to come. Hope you enjoyed this. 
Thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. I've enjoyed these breakdowns immensely after every game. Uh, I'm excited to do some more next year. So thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll see you.